Hi guys, Lawrence Yeager here, back with part two of this series. In this video, I'll be walking you through the lighting materials and rendering settings of the shot. Let's tackle how I created those caustics first. I added a plane into a blender scene, and I added a camera. I positioned the camera above the plane, set the camera to orthographic, and then adjusted the orthographic scale so the plane fits perfectly within the camera bounds. Also make sure that you set your resolution to a square ratio. I set mine to 4K, which is 4096 by 4096. We'll be using Blender's procedural textures, so you can render out 8K, 16K, 128K if you want. Let's take a look at the node graph. Alright, so as you can see, I've made up this texture using two separate groups. Uh, the first group I have is the large caustics, which is just uh, two Voreno textures. There's the one which I put through a value node, just to be able to control both of them at the same time. I divide the other one by two, so we have a larger texture and a smaller texture. I animate the Z location or the mapping node, so I get a bit of movement within the texture. I run it through a color ramp just to crush the colors, run it through a math node, invert it, and then multiply it so I get a bit more strength within that texture. For the second one as well, run it through a color ramp, run it through a power node, and multiply the top and the bottom one together, and that's how we get the first bit of caustics. Let's take a look at those smaller details. As you can see, it's exactly the same as the setup below. Uh, except the value node is set to 20 instead of 10, so I get finer details. The mapping node is also animated on the Z location. Uh, it's just offset it to a different number so that the animation is different. I run it through color ramps, through the math nodes, and then multiply those two together. And there you have it. Uh, there's some smaller details of the core sticks. And when we pipe those through an add node together, we get the finer details with the large details. I know it doesn't look like much, but I promise you, it'll look awesome once we use it in our shot. All right, to render out this texture, I just uh, headed over to my output and I rendered out a PNG uh, image sequence at 16 bit with zero compression. And that is that. We'll be using that a bit later on in our shot. Alright, for the stage I just used the image texture and I set it to a box mapping because I avoid UV at all costs, but don't listen to me, I'm just lazy. Uh, I piped those into a color ramp just to crush those values a bit, and then I piped it into a bump node which goes into the normal input of the principal shader, and I pumped the color input into the roughness channel of the principal shader, and, and yeah, that's basically the setup for the stage. For the lighting, I'm just using a HDRI at the moment just to test out my uh, shaders and I've set that to a strength of 2. The idea of this is like the inside of a pool or something, it's just so that the fluid wasn't floating around uh, in midair. This shader is very similar to the stage shader, I used an image texture for the base color, I set it to box and I played with the settings to get the scale and the position looking good. I then added more textures, uh, this one's just a bit of a grungy texture and this one is the roughness texture of those tiles. I've uh, multiplied those together to give myself a bit of variation of that roughness because it gets piped into the roughness channel. And then I used this one for the bump, which goes into a bump node into a principal shader and that is the shader. It's pretty straightforward. Oh, there are those core sticks there absolutely gorgeous. For this is pretty simple, uh, I just used the image texture sequence from earlier and uh, it goes into a color ramp which I didn't even use here but you can use it just to crush those values if you need to. It goes into an emission shader, I set that value really high, 15,000 in the strength and I just positioned it just below the surface of the liquid so it kind of always sits inside the liquid as you can see there. And uh, yeah, there are those settings. I set the size down to zero, and uh, the size of the shape is 180, and the blend is 0.5. And that is that. All right, here we go. Here's the liquid shader. Um, it's just the principled uh, shader with the roughness set to 0.05, uh, the transmission all the way up to one. I've got two uh, volume shaders, an absorption and a scatter added together, and that is that. It's pretty simple. There we go, the volume allows us beautiful streaks within the caustics and 
Yeah, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Right, let's take a look at that head. Uh, it's a pretty simple shader. We've just got two emission shaders which are mixed together with the factor. Um, as you can see here, there's my two emission shaders. Uh, there's the factor. Uh, and uh, the first one is the darker emission shader. There's the lighter one. Uh, we'll look at the darker one. It's just the image texture. It's a Stuco image texture. Goes through a mixed RGB with a color set to blue. Goes into a curve just to darken it down a bit and into the emission shader. Uh, for the factor, I used the pointiness into a color ramp. Got some uh, Musgrave textures with a bit of math note to kind of break it up and make it more organic and uh, there are all the values you can have a look at and there we go that goes into the factor and we've got our head and uh, then I just put the light completely off and that's our final lighting setup it's just the core sticks and the head really that add the light I've also set the white water the foam and the spray uh, to an emission shader set to one that's just to give uh, some extra light into the scene as you can see, the caustics look kind of gross when it doesn't have the, the liquid. It looks beautiful inside, but you've got these ugly seams on the outside. Uh, don't worry about those. As soon as you have the volume for the, the light to play around in, it kind of disperses beautifully and you get this nice shine on the outside without seeing those, those uh, you know, without seeing those gross seams. Lastly, let's look at those render settings. I set my resolution to 1080 by 1080. Uh, set my samples to 500, clamp direct and indirect set to 3, and I ticked reflective core sticks, which just brightens up the fluid as the light passes through it. Light path 6 0, bounces 6 0, and then diffuse 6, glossy 6, transmission 6, volume 0. And that's that, I think. Uh, thank you guys so much for your support in watching these videos. I'll definitely be making more. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below or on Twitter, and I'll try to get back to each and every one of you. Again, thank you guys so very much, and I will see you next time.